Okay, this is going to be part four of the video series on the convergence of sequences and if the sequence converges, uh, what number does it converge to? Now, in this video, uh, we'll look at sequences that involve factorials and whether you're successful in these or not, depending on, what, on whether you remember your rules uh, to factorials. So let's take a look at this first one. I've got a sequence a sub n is defined to be 3 over n factorial. Now, just like we've done in all the other videos, we'll go ahead and plot these points and get a look at it graphically first. So if you were to plot the first few points that make up the sequence, they would look like this. Now, remember, it converges if the points of the sequence, as you go way off to infinity, if the points of a sequence seem to be approaching a fixed number, then the sequence converges to that number. And you can look at it and tell that the points in this sequence seem to be approaching the x-axis. So... Let's go ahead and put a red line right through the line that they seem to be approaching. <laughs> and these blue dots seem to be approaching this red line. So if you were just looking at it graphically, you could conclude <clears throat> that this sequence appears to be converging, and it seems to be converging toward uh, 0, toward y equals 0. So graphically, that's what it would look like. But now we want to do it algebraically and show, see if we get the same results. Um, to start with now, before we start on this, since it involves factorials, let's do a quick review of factorials, because if you don't remember the factorial rules, then you'll have a lot of problems with these sequences. So the first one looks like this. Uh, just a review of factorials, <coughs> and just a reminder, we'll put a few examples up here. If you have five factorial, what that is, that's just five, uh, put it here, five times four times three times 2 <coughs> times 1 factorial, or times 1. So 5 factorial just in descending order from whatever the biggest number is down to 1. Now a couple special cases, if you have 0 factorial, just by definition, that's defined to be 1. <coughs> uh, if you have n factorial, you can write that as like this. This would be the first term would be n. <coughs> now you're going to write them in descending order. So it would be times, now the next term, <coughs> if you took away 1, would be n minus 1. Then that would be times, the next term would be n minus 2, and so on. And you would continue on down, and then eventually you'd get to 3 times 2 times 1. So again, n minus n factorial, start with n, and then just take away 1 each time. Now there are sometimes, if you have a problem like this, 7 factorial divided by 5 factorial, that if you, rather than writing it out completely like this, if you write it out in the partial terms, it could look like this. So I'm going to rewrite 5 factorial as 5 times, <clears throat> now just remember this part right here, from here to here, these terms are nothing more than 4 factorial. So I could write 5 <clears throat> as 5 factorial is 5 times 4 factorial. <clears throat> or you could write it as 5 times 4 times 3 factorial, and so on. And if you wanted uh, 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 factorial. Now where this notation helps is when you're solving a problem like this. So let's go ahead and just try this. So what I'm going to do is rewrite this as, uh, I'll write it as, um, in the bottom I'm going to have 5 factorial. Now in the top I'll write it as 7 times 6 times, and I'm going to stop at 5 factorial. Now, the reason I stop at 5 factorial is that when I get around to solving this, um, this 5 factorial on the bottom will cancel out the 5 factorial on the top. And that's going to give you 7 times 6, which would be 42, and you can get the answer like that. So the idea is to write it in descending order until the factorial on the top is equal to the factorial on the bottom, and you can cancel them out. Now some of the problems get a little bit trickier. Suppose you have n's in them. We'll still use basically the same approach here, but this time it's going to look something like this. We'll kind of spread this out to say about right here. Okay, now if I wanted to write them in descending order, I would do this. The first term, and it's going to be like what I've done up here, started with n, take away 1. So the first term is n plus 1. Now the second term, if you started with n plus 1 and took away n, or took away 1, you would have n. In the next term, if you took this term and took away 1, you'd have n minus 1. If you took away one more, you'd have n minus 2. And just to make sure we've got a lot of them, let's try one more. n minus 3. And then you can put a series of dots. This goes on forever. So it would look something like that. 
Now in the bottom, the first term is n minus 1. So I would have n minus 1. The second term would be take away 1, n minus 2. The third term would be n minus 3, and so on. It goes on forever. Now what this does is, if you look at it, um, these terms right here on the top from here to here exactly match these terms right here on the bottom from here to here. So all of these will cancel out all of these and just leave you with uh, these two right here. So you've got an n plus 1 uh, times n all over 1. Or it'll just turn into that and put it over 1. <clears throat> so again, write it out in expanded terms. You can cancel out what you can. Now let's try one more just to show you a little bit of variation on this. <clears throat> um, this one starts here, and we'll put it out to say about right here. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, now as far as which one's bigger, the one 2n plus 1 is going to be bigger than 2n minus 1. So I'm going to start in the bottom on this one, and I'll write it as this. The first term would be 2n plus 1. Now if I take away 1, it would be 2n plus 1 minus 1, or just 2n. Then the next term would be, starting with 2n, take away 1, you'd have 2n minus 1. If you went to the next term, you would have 2n minus 2, and it would repeat forever. Now in the numerator, the first term is 2n minus 1. So I've got a 2n minus 1. The next term, starting with this term, take away 1, I would have 2n minus 2, and so on. And it would repeat. Now again, what you'll find is that these terms in the top match these terms in the bottom, starting at 2 and minus 1, match these terms right here. So all of these terms up here will cancel out all of these terms down here, and it will leave you with, um, in the top you'll have 1 divided by, and you would have 2n plus 1 times 2n. So the idea is just spread them out, cancel out what you can, and you can reduce it to a simpler expression. And that's what we'll do in the problems that come up here. Okay, so with that quick little review out of the way, let's go back and try some problems. Okay, now in this one, what you've got is this. You want to find the limit as n goes way off to the right to infinity, what happens to this expression? And this part we can do right here. So we'll put the limit as n approaches infinity of 3 over n factorial. Now the argument goes like this. It's just like any other limit problem. As n goes to infinity, uh, as n approaches infinity, n factorial will approach infinity. So you're going to have 3 divided by an extremely large number, which means that this whole expression is going to go to 0. So this is going to wind up being 0, and that's going to be the limit, and that's what this is right here. That's what it converges to. So as you go way off to the right, the sequence converges to 0. And you can write the final answer on this. The question was, does this sequence converge, and what does it converge to? And the answer is that it converges to uh, 0. So again, on this one, it's pretty easy to find the limit. Uh, if n goes to infinity, then n factorial also goes to infinity, and you have a fixed number divided by an increasingly large number, so the whole thing has to go to 0. Okay, let's take a look at the next problem. And on this problem, it's a little bit more involved. You've got n plus 1 factorial divided by n minus 1 factorial. Again, we'll graph it and take a look at it and see kind of what this looks like. Um, if we were to plot the points, the first point is here, second point is here, and these things are going vertically almost instantly way off the scale. So this thing is going way up toward, and you can tell, toward a positive infinity. Now just looking at it graphically, you can tell it's not settling on a fixed number, so clearly this sequence is going to diverge. Um, but now the question is, um, how can you show it algebraically? So again, let's try the same approach that we did last time. Now first of all, I'll find the limit um, as n approaches infinity of n plus 1 factorial divided by n minus 1 factorial. And we're going to do exactly what we did in um, that review 
We'll find the limit as n approaches infinity, and we'll actually take the time to break these things up now into uh, their component terms. So in the numerator, what I've got is n plus 1. The first term is n plus 1. If I take away 1, the second term would be n. If I take away 1 from this one, this next term is going to be n minus 1. If I take away 1 from this one, I'll have n minus 2, and so on. It goes on forever. Now in the bottom, you've got the first term is going to be n minus 1. <clears throat> second term, take away 1 from that, would be n minus 2, and it goes on forever. Now again, you might notice that starting with n minus 1, uh, n minus 2 in the top, n minus 1, n minus 2 in the bottom, all of these terms right here are canceled out by all of these terms right here. Because really what this is, in the bottom you've got n minus 1 factorial, and all of these terms together are n minus 1 factorial. So what will happen is that this n minus 1 factorial cancels out this one, and it just leaves you with what's left over. So this would be the limit as n approaches infinity of this term in the numerator. You'll have uh, n plus 1 times n. All, in this case, it would all be over 1. <clears throat> now what that would be would be the limit as n approaches infinity and I'll go ahead and distribute this. This would be n squared plus n. So I want to find the limit of this. Now again, this is just a polynomial. This is the dominant term. n squared is the dominant term, so this n term doesn't really make any difference. And what you'll find is, if you take the limit, as n goes to infinity, then n squared would also go to infinity. This term would go to infinity, and the entire thing will go to infinity, which means that the limit does not exist. And the limit, if the limit doesn't exist, then that means that this sequence doesn't converge, and it diverges. So this sequence is going to diverge. Uh, it goes uh, up forever and doesn't settle on a fixed number. But again, the idea is take the factorials, break them down, and then cancel out what you can, and then try to find the limit of whatever's left over. Okay, let's take a look at one more. Okay, now in this one it's similar to it, but the factorials are a little bit different, so let's try this one. So a sub n is defined to be this. Now again, let's plot the points just to see whether it looks like graphically we'll get some kind of an answer. And what these do, they start out here, and if you look at it, it looks like these blue dots, again, are approaching the x-axis. So we'll stick a line in there just to make it visual. So the blue dots seem to be approaching the red line. So you might conclude that this sequence does seem to converge, and again, it seems to converge to zero. But let's go ahead and show that. So what we'll do is exactly the same thing we've done in the previous problems. We'll take the limit as n approaches infinity, and I want to find of 2n minus 1 factorial divided by, this is the original problem, uh, 2n plus 1 factorial. And that's going to be equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of, and we'll go ahead and spread this thing out now. <clears throat> so again, we'll write it out term by term. Now in the numerator, the first term would be 2 n minus 1. The next term, take away 1 from this one, and you'd have 2 n minus 2. <clears throat> and if you wanted to do one more, take away one more from here, we'd have 2 n minus 3, and then uh, <clears throat> they repeat forever. Now in the denominator, do the same thing. So the first term is 2 n plus 1. Uh, the second term, take away 1 from this term, and you'd have 2 n plus 1 minus 1, or just 2n. Take away 1 from this, this term, and you'd have 2n minus 1. And we'll do one more. Take away 1 from this term, you'd have 2n minus 2, and off they go forever. So we'll stretch that line out just a little bit. Now again, as far as what cancels out, if you notice on the top, starting with 2n minus 1, they repeat. So this part right here, all of these terms right here, are canceled out by all of these terms right here. And it's like having, in the top, it's like having 2n minus 1 factorial. 
And all of these terms in the bottom also represent 2n minus 1 factorial. So again, the 2n minus 1 on the top cancels out the 2n minus 1 on the bottom, and it leaves you, in this case, with the limit as n approaches infinity. Now this time in the top you've got a 1, and in the bottom you've got uh, 2n plus 1 times 2n. And we'll go ahead and find the limit of that. So now the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over, <clears throat> now we'll distribute in the bottom, so this is going to give you 4n squared uh, plus 2n. And if you found the limit as n approaches infinity, again you can use it, this is the dominant term in the bottom, so this term is in effect is like it's not even there. So if you take as n goes to infinity, n squared is going to go to infinity. You'd have 1 divided by a really large number. This entire term will go to 0, and you'll have 0 for the limit. So what this means is if uh, the sequence converges to 0, you can find the answer, you just wanted to know did it converge or not, and indeed this thing does converge to 0. And you can kind of see it graphically that it's converging to 0. <clears throat> but again, if you use your limit rule, and again use your rules for uh, factorials to spread it all out. And if you need to, just a quick review of the factorial rules look like this again. So given one in this form, spread it out, cancel what you can to make it a simpler thing, and then you can go ahead and solve that. So that's a quick look at how to do uh, sequence problems involving factorials.